So this episode of Star Trek Online is a little hard to place in terms of chronology, what do you expect from a chapter centred on time travel. Basically the Daniels we meet in this mission is from a time before he started getting altered by the Envoy's manipulations, but after the initial mission chapter where we met the Enterprise C. It's all about time travel so it doesn't really matter what order you play this mission in, but for some reason it will set at the end of the chapter which I play through in the order the game presents. Some time ago, there was a temporal disruption involving the USS Enterprise C. We thought the matter was fully resolved, but there was an oversight. We need to find one of the Enterprise C survivors, a temporal duplicate of Starfleet Admiral Tanay. Until we reconcile her displacement, the timeline is in jeopardy. There's one person in particular that can provide the location of the survivors, Sela of Romulus. We believe she's operating in the Cytor system. Meet me there to search for Sela and enlist her aid. The event he's referring to is one we technically have no recollection of, as it created an altered history before we restored the original timeline, but it seems that we've some loose ends to tie up. Well, it's not made clear if this mission is due to further manipulations of the Temporal Cold War, but it does seem kind of separate as an incident. As for Sela being involved, well the Roman Republic and the Alliance have been looking for her since she slipped away from Earth after the Iconian War. So to have a time traveller simply turn up and say, oh yeah, Sela? Yeah, she was rebuilding uh, a following in the Scientor system. Well, it's a bit of a win. Bit of a cheat, but still a bit of a win. The Scientor system is a remote former Star Empire area with a suspected defunct Tal Shiar base. Despite looking, that base was never found and there was little else in the system to capture the interest of the Republic or Starfleet, so it's been marked off as, well, unremarkable. As we enter the system, Tarsi reports that there is nothing on sensors, no ships nor bases. Also transport of Room 1 reports Agent Daniels has beamed in from somewhere, or sometime. If she's here, we'll need to draw her out. Seal is not easily found if she doesn't want to be. In the meantime, there's a structure on one of the larger asteroids, but the mineral content there is making long-range scanning difficult. I recommend we take a closer look. What sort of structure? Because it's something every survey has missed. Looks like a small base of some kind. Industrial. Possibly military. Whatever it is, it's running at low power. We'll get a better idea at close range. Our intel shows a lot of Romulan activity in this system. In Sela's name. Intel from the future. Andy. Command believes she's planning an assault of some kind and gathering tactical resources. Of course she is. So tell me, what does she go on to do if we don't interfere here and now? Also, Agent Daniels, how's the face? You look well, healthy. Where exactly are you from in your timeline? Because I don't think we're meeting in the chronological order at the minute. You know what? For once, we keep the secrets. As we close in on the base we can make out dim lighting with a single landing tower highlighted and an empty docking arm extended from the rock. This looks like an abandoned Tal Shiar base, or what's left of one. Right, well it's one we'd have never found if Captain Hindsight over here hadn't told us exactly where to look, so we give it a scan. It looks like the interior has been stripped of anything useful over an extended period of time. This could be the work of Sela's forces. They've been- Wait! Picking up enemy contacts. Romulan ships decloaking. I guess these are Sealer's followers. How does she keep amassing them anyway? We make full speed for the decloaking vessel and hit the ship with a heavy salvo from our phaser banks. And that's all it takes. They're disengaging. The two vessels, older by Star Empire standards, immediately regret their decision to engage us and cloak once again. Those ships were older, but battle-ready and in good repair. It's unusual of them to run so quickly. We should stay sharp. There's probably more of them out there waiting under cloak. In the meantime, we damage their propulsion systems in the fight. They're leaking plasma. We trace the plasma particles that they are leaking as they limp away at impulse. Hopefully this will lead us to Sela, as clearly they aren't using this base as an HQ. As long as they keep leaking plasma, we can follow their trail. They're not trying to lose us. I've got a bad feeling about this. We follow the plasma particles into what is most probably a trap, our deflectors brushing aside the pulverised dust of multiple asteroids as we tail our invisible quarry. 
it doesn't take us too long before our hunt comes to an end. Unidentified ship, you are trespassing in sovereign Romulan space, and you are outnumbered. Surrender now! Hey, Zila, you slipped away from the last Iconian party without so much as a goodbye. Oh, it's you again. Hey, she remembers me. So yeah, you're under arrest. No. You are still trespassing in my space, and I could use a new ship for my armada. Really? We're still doing this? Alright, fine. Red alert shields up. The battle with Sela's new flagship is a brief exchange. It's clear from the resources she's amassed that the Star Empire is scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to what it can salvage. As the Romulan Republic rises, the old empire falls, and Sela with it. Nonetheless, this is a de Derodex class we're dealing with, so getting within 6 kilometers of it, and it will attempt to tractor beam you and then hit you with its slow moving but heavy plasma torpedoes. Fine, we'll talk. Cut to the chase and tell me what it is you want. Really, you should have known better, or was this a pride thing? But you can apologise by telling me the location of some Talshiar prisoners. Ah, I'd wondered when you'd get around to looking for the Enterprise C survivors. Okay, didn't mention that little fact. How did you... You know what? Fine, point made. You're still a danger and you seem to have a solid information network, so let's talk. When the Enterprise C survivors were taken, my father agreed to let the rest of the crew live, so long as Lieutenant Yar served as his concubine. She was executed, but my father held to his word. I am aware of their location, but I will only take you there if you agree to bring me with you. Sure, you can come aboard as a prisoner. If you come with us, we're going to arrest you. And what assurances do I have that I won't simply be executed? I will not agree to my death. This is a Starfleet vessel. I'm not going to execute you. It's a bloody paranoid. Blimey. If I agree to this, I will be held in house arrest, somewhere reasonably pleasant by my own standards. I will not be cut off from access to the outside world, and I will not be given any sort of death penalty. Further, you will allow my crew and their ships to go without harassment. Fine, your ships and crew can go. It's you that keeps rallying them anyway. As for the rest, well, I'm sure arrangements can be made. We'd have to talk with the rest of the Alliance, though, but you can have guest quarters under guard on the Armager for the journey. So we beam Sela over. The survivors of the Enterprise C were sent to a Tal Shiar prison world. Set a course for the Pictay system. I shall make my way to the bridge of this... <sighs> quaint little ship. Yeah, this quaint little ship just kicked your ass. So we set a course for the Pictay system and pull away from Sela's disabled vessel. Honestly, what happened to the whole self-realisation thing that she underwent at the end of the Iconian War? I'm reading several Tholian ships on sensors, along with some unusual temporal fluctuations. 
Tholians dislike anything involving time travel. We should be cautious. If they think we are responsible, they may become hostile. Pictae is in the Gasco sector of the Beta Quadrant, and this ringed planet is supposedly the home of the survivors of the Enterprise C when it re-emerged in 2344 over Narendra III. It was destroyed, protecting a Klingon colony from Romulans, but the survivors were taken for interrogation, and a temporally displaced Yar ended up birthing Sela. This is the Pictae system, one of many worlds where the Tal Shiar would send assets important enough to keep, but not threatening enough to kill. Supplies to this world stopped when Hobus was destroyed, but the Enterprise C crew are proven survivors. I admit, the Tholians being here is new. Surely they won't be too difficult for you to handle. I know what you're doing, but you're right. Still, we should try and talk to the Tholians first. We can see these temporal anomalies from here, diffracting the space behind like droplets of water on a window pane. The Tholians swarm nearby, in their small web spinner vessels, probing and scanning the intrusions into their realm. Do not intrude. The anomaly will be eradicated. Leave now. Leave now, he says, before erecting a Tholian web cage to keep us in place. With little choice, we fire back on the Tholian ships. Tholians love meddling in alternate universes and realities, but are really tetchy when it comes to others doing the same or time travel. Tholians were performing a detailed scan on that anomaly. Something caused it to destabilize quickly. Not a good sign. Cool, cool, I'll get right on that. Just give me a minute to find the weak points in this web. Eventually, freeing ourselves, we make our way to where the anomaly was, only to find it is indeed gone. However, we are detecting a second one nearby, but it too is rapidly surrounded by Tholians, which we also have to drive off. Another temporal anomaly. It was emitting high levels of tachyon radiation and chronotons before it dispersed. I'll need more data, but I think it was an unstable gateway into transdimensional space. Interesting. An area with two realities intersecting. This must be related to the. Scan one. I want to see what they were so interested in. Yeah, you notice how the crew's not doing anything? That's because I didn't order it. You don't get the commands here. The scan one. Please. Based on these readings, I believe I've found an origin point for these anomalies. They're coming from the planet below. I suggest sending an away team down to collect data. Before we can do that, one more Tholian patrol shows up that we have to deal with first. All clear. We should check out the planet while we can. I am detecting signs of habitation, but there's a lot of temporal disturbances down there. They're making it hard to obtain a clear reading at this distance. Okay, assemble a standard away team. We'll bring Cedar. Assemble your most able crewmen and... My apologies. This is your ship. You give the orders. Daniels, Sela, with me. Darcy, you have the bridge. We've beamed down into an open courtyard within what's left of the Tal Shiar prison. Doesn't look like it's been inhabited for some time. I'm reading a number of temporal anomalies nearby, but my tricorder's having trouble analyzing the data. We're going to need to get closer. The shipments of supplies stopped long ago. Anyone alive down here will have a hard time. I suppose that's too bad for Admiral Tanay. I'm sorry, did anyone say anything about Admiral Tanay? That is what this is about, isn't it? There are two of her and no one else. If you find her, I doubt she will be alive. Well, we're going to look for her anyway. It's worth pointing out that our real Tanay is the chief of anti-Star Empire actions along the former neutral zone border at Starbase 39. So Empress Sela here has ample reason to dislike her, even her altered reality duplicate. This Tal Shiar prison, however, is clearly no longer in use. It's completely overgrown. Decades of disuse have seen the tropical plant's biome take back this territory. We can faintly see the bubbling temporal anomalies further within. This world was abandoned by the Tal Shiar decades ago. I doubt there's anyone left. The survivors of the Enterprise C might have left personal items behind. 
Speaking of, something gleams in the undergrowth nearby, catching our eye. This data pad dates back to the late 23rd century. It lacks power, but it should work once it's recharged. We pocket it and move on, heading into the complex proper, past the rusted iron gates and lichen-wrapped stone walls. We spot another pad on a stone table further in. This place hasn't been inhabited for a while. Thing is, the tricorder is giving a range of time from three months to 30 years. We're dealing with some serious temporal flux here. I can literally see that. There's some temporal flux right over there. That's one of the temporal anomalies. I wouldn't recommend entering its area of effect. From what I'm reading here, contact with the anomaly will do considerable damage to anything organic. That being said, I believe we can deal with this. Stand over there, and between the two of us, we should be able to nullify the anomaly. We do as Daniels instructs, and we manage to disrupt the anomaly with the power of science. Well, would you look at that? It's like time has been moving slower in this localised area. You can clearly see the dividing line between 30 years of abandonment and only three months. The area from within the confines of the sphere is completely preserved, even splitting halfway through this table. Someone's been here recently. The tricorder's picking up numerous signs of habitation in the area. By the look of things, someone stripped this area of all useful items and moved on. Define what you mean by recently, because... This gate appears to have been locked from the outside. Perhaps they knew about the anomaly, but didn't have the means to handle it. Okay, ignore me, that's cool too. Ah, there's a manual override over there near our beam down site. We can use it to open the gates. Yeah, problem. That's behind some more gates, and some more anomalies appear to have sprouted. When we disrupted this anomaly, it seemed to fracture, forcing more anomalies into our timeline. I think we might be able to use that to our benefit, though. I'll stay here and act as an anchor. Find the best spot and use your tricorder to emit the dispersal pattern again. We should be able to push those bubbles away from the gate controls. If you get stuck, I'll be able to get you out of trouble. Okay, cool. So we disable the anomalies between us and the gates. Right. The gate controls are trapped within an anomaly. We'll have to disperse it to use them. Looks like some of the closed gateways are rusted now. Find another spot. This puzzle is really rather easy. It literally has arrows guiding you to the next spot. But basically, every time we displace an anomaly, it simply splits or relocates. Like pushing soap bubbles in water. They move and split rather than pop. I think I can see a clear path to the controls. The gate's open. Try to disperse where you are. It should open an escape path for you. Eventually, our work done, we make our way back to Daniels. Now we can continue our exploration of the ruins. Excellent. The gate's open, and we can continue our search for Tanae. Well done. Before we move on, I've managed to bring the data pad online again. It might contain clues on what happened. Hmm. Looks like it's a personal unit. The primary user is Lieutenant Tasha Yar of Starfleet. Wait, really? I mean, yeah, she was brought back here. Give me that. The first entry dates to 2389, nearly 40 years after she was executed. Or at least 40 years after she was supposed to have been executed. Wait, what? Play the log. I am Natasha Yar, security chief for the Federation Starship Enterprise D. Well, at least that's who I was. For the past 40 years, I've been Tal Shiar prisoner 24601. But even that changed a week ago. Our regular supply drops from the Star Empire stopped three months ago. The guards started caring too much about what might be going on elsewhere in the quadrant and caring too little about their prisoners. We were able to overpower them. We've managed to recover some data pads like this one, but there isn't enough here for us to call for help or escape. I'm leaving this record in case anyone comes looking for us. Sila, if you find this, I still love you. I've missed you. Um. Lieutenant Yar was supposed to have been executed. 
My father said it happened. There were witnesses. How can... Clearly, there was some judicious alteration of history. Yeah, but literal or bureaucratic? The Enterprise C survivors were here, but something drove them away. Something more than the loss of supplies. We should continue looking for the survivors. Your duplicate of Tanae may yet be alive on this rock. Yeah, even if history was altered, you're in the dark about it, so your father lied to you. It would not have been the first time. No doubt he thought she might still have been useful in some way. I can see the pity in your eyes. Keep it. His decision allowed me to become the person I am. I do not regret that. Okay, I'm not detecting any parental issues here. Nope, perfectly fine, perfectly normal. Look, there's a path ahead. Oh, oh yes, Daniels, well spotted a path ahead. We must investigate that immediately. Thank you. So, after the 1701C's survivors were brought down here, 43 years passed before Hobus happened. When that did, it took two further years for the Star Empire to forego maintaining this facility and it was cut off. As a result, the prisoners overthrew the guards and took back what little salvage there had been from the Enterprise C. Hmm. This anomaly looks more stable than the others. It's probably less deadly, but let's not find out now. I suppose you want me to go grab that pad that's lying underneath it, right? The generators died and no one knows why. Richard thinks it might have been the big predators. Tanae thinks she might be able to salvage some of the parts. I hope she can. She's been glaring over the remains for the last three hours. Two more dead. We can't stay here. And the animals know the fence won't harm them anymore. I rigged an early warning system using a trick I learned growing up on Turkana 4, but that won't stop them. We took a vote, and we're moving. We'll build a new settlement in the old secondary supply bunker the Tal Shiar abandoned 20 years ago. The surviving guard has agreed to guide us there. Loyalty to the Tal Shiar fades when you've been stranded with the inmates. So, after holding the facility for some time, eventually the power begins to fail and the defending fences lose their charge. Now predators can get in and the complex is no longer secure, so the survivors make the choice to leave. Among them, the equally abandoned guards. Lieutenant Yar never discussed Turkana 4. When I was older, I discovered why. She was a survivor. It is clear that her arrangement with my father was just that. Obviously, she continued that trait into her existence here. There's more ground to cover. Survival apparently runs in the genes. There's another unstable anomaly. The anomaly has left some of the rock in a molten state. You took readings in orbit. Surely we should continue looking. Well, you've changed your tune. Yes, we're going to continue looking. Let's just get rid of this anomaly first. Clearly, these anomalies must be connected to your mission. Now, while you take a leisurely stroll through the jungle, I will be moving on. It appears that there are more survivors than initially believed. Oh, so now suddenly you're on board with the rescue mission idea. Ah, uh, there's a lot of interference, but I think I'm picking up a life sign. Tanae! Go away! Leave this place! She seems erratic and attacks us with a small disruptor she's found. Also, wait, what noise did Mark Hale just make? Ah. Let's not talk about that ever again. No, no! Please, not again! Stay away! Stay away! It seems your duplicate, Tanae, is still alive, and she isn't pleased to see you. I don't really blame her. I wasn't exactly thrilled to see you again, either. Oh, stop it, you. You'll make me blush. She's run off, but there's an even larger anomaly close. It looks like it was a structure at one point, but I doubt any survivors would remain in a ruin like this. This larger distortion is going to take a little more finagling to disrupt. Daniels? Analysis? Another temporal anomaly, and this one is larger than the last. There are temporal eddies moving through the area, and a few stable locations between them. 
Now, if you establish temporal stabilizers in these three locations, we can disperse the anomaly and get a better look at the area. Hopefully, the Enterprise C survivors were able to escape the area before this happened. So, there are pockets of normal time moving throughout the inner circumference of this bubble. Within these, we are fine, no temporal effects, so we need to stay in these smaller eddies as they shift around in order to place three remote destabilizers to bring down this whole disruption. There's a stable pocket ahead of you. Set up the first stabilizer there. So, is this the sort of normal day-to-day -day stuff a time agent gets involved with? That's the first stabilizer. Two more to go. I can just picture this being sort of, you know, the mundane stuff. You know, like we get told to go map this star system, you get told to go stabilise this pocket. Eventually we place the third device and bring the whole area into sync with our time frame. Incredible! Dispersing the anomaly restored more than I expected. We should look for clues. An entire structure has reappeared. This might be the storage facility mentioned by the survivors in Yar's log, where they moved to after the main prison fell. Certainly it's been furnished with all the items of an abode. Desks, beds, ample lighting, and another pad. We found an entire grove of saplings. Richard swears the same area was full of towering trees last week. He might be mistaken, we're both getting older. I thought I saw a Romulan in the brush. He was wearing a 22nd century style uniform. When I looked again, he was gone. Maybe I'm going senile. Richard insists I'm too young. Maybe it's because the outside world has been on my mind. Sela has been on my mind. I wonder what happened to her. While her father was a Tal Shiar general, he spared my life in the end. Perhaps he wasn't petty and cruel to her. I hope he wasn't. If you should find this, happy 50th birthday, Sila. I have missed you. I only regret we were separated. We find another of Yar's logs atop these crates in the middle of the complex. Shelter ruined, last tricorder gone, half our stores destroyed, five dead. The hunters and gatherers returned to find many dead and unconscious. I used my emergency medic training, but I was a security officer, not a doctor. Devek might not make it. None of them can remember what happened. Without the tricorder, we can't scan the area or for internal injuries. I suspect that there is something on the planet causing anomalies of some kind. Danae has not reacted well. She's been talking to herself and keeping apart from everyone. A problem for later. Survival now. So, they started experiencing distortions around the area and Tanae was growing erratic. Yar mentioned Sila's 50th birthday, which would have made the year 2395 and Tasha Yar 80. Some sort of temporal inversion happened here. Some of the rock returned to an earlier molten state, while some of the building materials aged over 200 years. Anyone standing close to these objects would have been affected as well, regressed to infancy, or aged to the grave. Well, I suppose it was nice that Yar thought of me, but that doesn't change the fact that she was going to steal me away like a thief in the night. If she had truly cared, she would have stayed where she was. My father was not cruel or petty, at least not to me. He was hard because he needed to be. I thrived because of it. The Enterprise C survivors were surprisingly resilient. Tasha's notes are more sparse, but seem to record a productive, if primitive, community. They mention a secondary site close by. If your Vulcan survived, there may be others, and they may be close. Over here! There's a path with recent footprints. I'm reading another anomaly, further down the path. Tanae might be there. Sila seems to be getting more than she bargained for from this world. At least for now, it's brought her goals in line with ours, find the survivors. We follow these tracks, they do look fresh, but with all the temporal issues going on, 
and that means next to nothing. Such a anomaly and its allies must be purged. Oh! Tholians, I almost forgot they were here. That Tholian away team must have beamed down to investigate the anomalies. Ah, great. That means the armadure is probably dealing with another ship in orbit. Alright, sightseeing over. We need to pick up the pace. This looks to be a well-worn path. Some recent footprints here, heading the other way. They might have run into Tholians. It seems your Vulcan passed this way recently. Perhaps the cavern mentioned Natasha's logs is nearby. We should follow the tracks. It seems many of the refugees would be alive if it weren't for the anomalies. I wonder how many are left now. Just say it, we're all thinking the same thing. Is Tasha one of the survivors? Well, I guess we'll find out. Ahead looms a cavern, a welcome shelter from the spiders and distortions of the jungle floor. If I was hiding out, this is where I'd go. I'm detecting signs of recent habitation in this location. Maybe we'll find more answers. This was some sort of dwelling up until a few months ago. If I'm reading this right, there was an explosion of tetrion particles here. A fatal one, judging by the organic residue on the walls. No one's been living here since, according to these tricorder readings. Damn, so a distortion manifested inside the cave and killed the occupants. Well, let's have a look around, they might have left something. The anomalies are temporal in origin. I... I... I, I watched Richard wither and die before my eyes. An anomaly appeared and moments later he aged a hundred years. We buried him this morning in the clearing. I, I never expected he and I would end this way. I miss him. Richard was a wonderful partner for these last decades. A good man. We built a wonderful life despite it all. My only regret is that Sela never got to know how kind and brave Richard was. He'd have been such a wonderful stepfather. Tanae hasn't been seen in days. I'm worried she won't come back. I I'm worried she will. I thought her strange behavior might be a degenerative Vulcan sickness, but it, she was answering questions before they were asked, and she's been close to every anomaly that's happened. Maybe I'm jumping in shadows. The part of me that is still a security officer on the Enterprise doesn't think I am, though. So Tanae is clearly the focal point of these distortions. This is Tanae. I have agreed to report the final words of Natasha Yar and to hold this log for the future. If there is one, if it isn't here already, I... What? No! Focus! Focus! Natasha Yar died of a fever. She... She wished for the story of the crew of the Enterprise C to be remembered. They were brave beyond expectation. She wished for her daughter to know that she was loved and that Natasha lived a long and happy life. But Natasha missed her and she hoped her daughter's life was wonderful. Natasha requests that if this log is found, that this record be conveyed to Sela of Romulus and to the Federation. Do not come near me. End log. With a more somber tone, we leave this cave. So it sounded like Yar, Richard Castillo, and Tanay were the last three survivors after the anomalies began to manifest. Clearly, Tanay's presence here in this timeline was causing some severe overlap of the two alternate histories. I think I see movement in the bushes. Tanay? Notting up time in the vicinity around her. As for why Tanay? I can only speculate, but it could be that unlike the crew of the Enterprise at sea, who are simply captured and native to this timeline, Tanay and Yar were not. Stop following me! However, unlike Yar, there were two Tanays in existence at the same time. As before, Tanay attacks us on sight and we're forced to subdue her. No, go away! I told you. To stay away! Tanae, it's alright. We're here to fix this, and we can. Okay? I... I am dangerous. You should not be here. 
No one can be here. No! Not again! Oh! No! Not again! There's a new anomaly forming. Folians! Purge the anomaly. Purge the contaminated. We're forced to deal with the overzealous Tholians once again, but upon driving them away for a second time, we're able to eventually deal with our errant Vulcan Admiral. Today, the anomalies that have been occurring were caused by decades of temporal interference. Because of what happened with the Enterprise-C, you exist in two places at once. We can fix this. You and your counterpart can be reintegrated. Your memories will be integrated as well, but the anomalies will stop. I... I see the logic in your presence here. I am anomalous. My presence here must be sufficiently reconciled to preserve the order of things. I presume you are here to accomplish this. Thus, I will go with you. Excellent. You don't have to hide any longer. And this temporal reintegration is a strange process, whereby two of the same individual from alternate compatible timelines are merged into a single person once again. Ahead we can see a single autumnal tree amid the sprawl of green. Maybe it's caused by the presence of an anomalous being, bringing this area out of phase with the rest of time. It would have to be an area repeatedly visited by Tanae if that were the case though, so there must be something of importance here. At the base of the tree we find a grave, with the name Natasha Yar etched into the stone, as well as the Starfleet Delta. All this time she was here. I believe she was dead. Tasha believed I might come looking for her. She believed it so strongly she left logs in case. Tanae held her logs for her. And now, she is truly dead. This place has led to some interesting revelations, shall we say? I think it best we leave before more Tholians show up. Agreed. Prepare to beam out. Looks like we beamed up just in time. Several Tholian ships are on an attack vector. Oh, really? Can't we just leave? We have what we came for. We just need to get out of here. Ruins the narrative pacing. Well, the Tholians have detected the danger that Tanae poses and know that we have her, so they really don't want to let us leave. So we have to fight off their vessels for a final time before we can safely warp away without being pursued. Something is happening. It's happening again. Another anomaly is forming. Alongside this, more Tholians arrive. However, the USS Pastak, a 26th century Federation timeship, arrives to aid in our escape. We easily deal with the Tholians, aided by our next century allies, but surprisingly it's Admiral Tanay who hails us from the future vessel. Al, Admiral Tanay. I see you found my displaced temporal counterpart. Well done. Thank you, Admiral. And it sounds like you've been briefed already? An operations team is standing by on this vessel to assist with her temporal reintegration. Please beam her aboard and we will begin the process. It is possible that I may acquire a new set of memories as part of the process. A small price to pay to stabilize the timeline. As it has been said, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, or the one. I understood we'll beam Tune over. Uh, oh, one more thing, we also have Sela aboard. I see. Having read the briefing from Starfleet Command, I find her presence here to be most logical, considering the situation. Also, she's agreed to go back into Federation custody now that this whole issue's been wrapped up. Very well. I will take custody of Sela and deliver her to a secure facility once the reintegration procedure is complete. Beam her aboard with my temporal counterpart. Understood. Let's get this sorted. It seems our journey is at a parting of the ways once more. I know. So soon, so sad. You know what? I'll be sure to visit you in prison from time to time. I suppose I needn't remind you that you agreed to do this though, right? I did, and I will. 
but I have a condition to my surrender. You know, you can talk about it with Sinead, energised. So, here we have a 26th century vessel, the same one that originally helped us with the Enterprise C situation that arrived to pick up our local era to Ney, while Daniels' 31st century Federation agency grabbed the aberration to Ney. <laughs> I wonder if these two agencies from different times are liaising, or if this is an example of two departments handling the same case. Either way, it's not paperwork that I have to fill out. That's Daniels' job. We transport our passengers to the timeship and then leave the system. The timeline is stabilizing. Anomaly counts are dropping and our agents are reporting a decline in temporal aftershocks due to recent events. That's a good thing, by the way. The aftershocks of our recent discoveries on Pictay may take some time for Sela to resolve, however. I hope she's able to find a sense of peace and closure from what she's learned today. I'll be heading back to Temporal Command once we've fully integrated the two Tanais. Be seeing you. Tell me about my mother. 